So I would encourage the follower of any faith to, in their own heart and mind, in their own experience, go back to that original experience that is at the heart of their faith, whether it's Muhammad or the Buddha, whoever it might be. And I believe we have that same opportunity, however you might see yourself in terms of your faith, but that same opportunity with what it is that Jesus brought into the world, his message. 2,000 years is a long time, right? A lot, a lot of, what, water under the bridge, if you will. A lot of religion, a lot of religious practice, a lot of politics and government based on religion, a lot of human history. What I want to suggest here this morning is that we can go back for us in America through evangelical Christianity through the years of that. We can go back through Protestant history all the way back to Martin Luther all the way back through all the history of the Roman Catholic Church and even the Roman Empire Back into the day, even back before Peter and Paul brought their best vision of what Jesus was teaching to the world. And I would say we have the same opportunity that the follower of any faith has, which is to, in our own heart and mind, as it is for me, sit at the feet of the great teacher and hear from the great teacher in her own heart and mind what they were saying, what they were attempting to, to communicate that got so filtered, at least, by people, sometimes deliberately distorted over the years, a little like a game of telephone, right? You pass it on down the line, and by the time it gets to you, you can hardly make sense of it. it hardly relates to what was originally being said. In this case, the red letter words representing what he said, as translated into English, in the King James Version of the Bible, assists us to do it gives us some indication of what he was bringing. The teaching I'd like to start with is this that he brought. And I, I think you'll hear it as I do, as a global teaching, as a universal teaching, not stamped with the Christian religion, although the Christian religion is Know, welcome to pick it up and be a, a champion of it to the and it's done that to some degree. But anyway, it's this. And you'll have to pardon the the ma the male cast of the language, understanding that in the day the word man was a word that was used for man or woman. So we could say man or woman, it translated that way. Greater love hath no man or woman than that he or she lay down their life for their friend. Greater love hath no man or woman than that he or she lay down his or her life for their friend. Of course, there can be a death-oriented way of looking at that, right? I'll die for you. Do you want your friend to die for you? Not really. That doesn't help. I don't believe that's what's being said. Have you had something of the experience of laying down your life for another person? 
being there for them, laying down your life, not your death, your life, your life force, your life energy, your love. No, I'm, I'm laying it down for you. I'm here for you. Whatever's going on, I'm laying down my life for you. One of the things that come out is that, you know what? We do really, at, at bottom, at the root of things, love one another. Now, that fact gets clouded in the culture in which we live. But at the root of things, we do love each other. And to have a context where that love is clear and be clearly felt and known is, is a gift. It is a gift to be able to love another person. And that was my experience that I just got to love these people. Um, loving isn't trying to love, is it? That's, that's a whole different thing. Loving is laying down your life for another person. Giving something that might make their path easier. It would give them a boost. It would lend your insight, your wisdom, your care to them. That's a, in a way, an exceptional circumstance we kind of work it out to be a special circumstance where things can, can happen that don't happen in many people's everyday life. But still, in everyday life, is it not an honor to love someone and to be allowed to love them, to be allowed to lay down your life to have what you're laying down for them accepted and receive, received, it is an honor. Greater love hath no man or woman than this.